Welcome to RADR 1411. This is your intro to lab. Uh, today we'll be going into one of the exam rooms that we have here in the Coleman Towers. Um, first of all, let me show you the door. It has the radiation area caution sign on it. This sign is referred to as the tree foil. And anytime you approach a room that has a sign like this, you should approach it, approach it with caution as it is an area where radiation can be manufactured. First of all, I'd like to bring you on in and show you what we refer to as the X-ray tube. This tube is where X-ray radiation is produced. It does move. We have what we refer to as the tube here. And the, the actual interaction where radiation is produced takes place in this tube. There is no radioactive material in this tube, uh, but there is a radiation is produced through an interaction of electrons slamming into what we refer to as the anode, which we'll go into more detail in other classes. All right, the next part of the X-ray system that I'm going to discuss is the image receptor. This is what we refer to as an image receptor. The size here is 14 by 17. They come in multiple sizes depending on the institution you're at, but most of the time you'll work with the one that's either 14 by 17 or perhaps 16 by 60. Uh, this has taken the place of radiographic film. The image takes place inside this and is sent by Wi-Fi over to your monitors where you'll see them through monitors. There is no more film. Images can be done solely on the image receptor or the image receptor can be placed into a table or what we refer to as a wall bucket. As you can see, there's an image receptor already in this one. Uh, if one is simply using the image receptor to image a body part, you can place the body part on the image receptor and move move your light field over to the body part. What you need to remember is that the light field that's projected from below the X-ray tube represents your field of X-radiation. So wherever you see light, you'll see X-radiation projected onto the image receptor and body part. This X-ray tube is very movable. You can up or down. You can even project it in a circle. You can angle your tube, and once again, you can move this tube in literally any direction that you need to, and you'll find that at times, depending on the ambulatory state of your patient, you may have to use all of these tools to get the image that you're seeking. Uh, once again, for a reasonably small body part, one can use the image receptor. Once you get to larger body parts like abdomen, lumbar spine, femurs, we place the image receptor in what we refer to as a bucky. This is referred to as a table bucky because it's a bucky incorporated into the table unit. We would then have to align our x-ray tube 
So I've aligned my x-ray tube with my table bucky. So I know that the image receptor is aligned with the tube itself. Therefore, when the x-radiation comes out, it will be aligned with the image receptor. I can control the size of the x-ray field by adjusting my collimators. So once again, this is referred to as the table bucky. The same thing holds true over here. This is referred to as the wall bucky. I would just simply use it if my patient is ambulatory, able to stand. I have my image receptor in here. Then what I will do is take my x-ray tube and align it with the wall bucky. This is referred to as tube bucky alignment and it's extremely important. You don't want to be irradiating parts of the room or parts of the patient that you aren't supposed to be irradiated and not supposed to be imaged. So you only want to irradiate what you're going to image. Okay, so I have my x-ray tube aligned with my wall bucky, 72 inches SID. SID stands for source to image distance. Source, the source of x-radiation is your x-ray tube. The distance is the distance your image receptor is from the x-ray tube. In this case, it's a 72 inch SID, which is a standard distance that you will use for chest x-rays. Okay, now what we're going to look at is table movement. This is our examination table. This is what we refer to as a full floating table. The table top, you can move it in literally any direction. Note that the light field stays where it is. You should have already aligned your image receptor, which is inside the table bucky with your x-ray tube. Once you align these two, you should basically leave them alone and not adjust them unless you're absolutely necessary. necessary. Um, if you have to make any adjustments, try to only use your full floating table. The table also rises up. And the table goes down with these foot pedals. Every manufacturer is slightly different. Sometimes you'll have this type of a system where you push in. Sometimes there'll be little pedals that stick out, which you will hit and press down. I find those to be a little difficult and awkward sometimes because you'll accidentally hit them and move the table when you don't want to. Okay, with this table bucket, we also have uh, three locks that we need to be familiar with. This red one here is just an emergency stop. It should disconnect all power to the table, and this table will lock in place. Over here, we have two green buttons. This button, when lit up, allows tracking for, with the tube and the table. What that means is if you raise the table, the tube will raise along with it and maintain a 40 inch source to image distance. If you lower the tube, same thing will happen. Uh, the table will track along with it. Over here, this green button will unlock and lock the table top. When I unlock it, I now have a full floating table. If I lock it, I can no longer move the table in a full floating manner, but I can move it up and down in this manner. This is your x-ray control panel. 
This is where the technologist will select the correct kilovoltage, the correct milliamperage, and the correct time to get the energetic radiation that he needs, or she needs, excuse me, to get the correct image with density and contrast. Uh, the kilovoltage adjustment is here. Kilovoltage is just ex determines the amount of voltage that's going to go across your x-ray tube. We'll be covering that in greater detail in my class. The mass is a combination of the milliamperage and the time. And that's going to determine fundamentally how much radiation you're going to produce and how much radiation will get to the image receptor. These are all can be adjusted by the technologist. You have your basic on and on switch. You can go and select the type of exam you want to do through these icons hip, abdomen, femur, patella, ankle. Basically, every body part should be represented by its own icon. When you press that icon, it will go to a what we refer to as a default technique. It will be a technique that has already been basically suggested by your bioengineers. But as a technologist, you'll notice that a lot of your patients are going to vary in size, and so you have the capability to adjust the technique to what you think may be appropriate for that particular patient. These control panels also have an icon that's referred to over here as AEC. That stands for Automatic Exposure Control. And I think a good analogy for that is kind of like uh, when you're driving a car, putting the transmission in auto. When you're using AEC, the milliamperage and the time is selected basically for you or determined for you by equipment inside the room that's adjusted to get the correct density for that body part. That's getting a little advanced and we'll be covering that in more detail in my class. Okay. Over here on the console we have the x-ray exposure control switch. It actually comes out. You can hold it like this. You can make the exposure while it's in its place, in its holder. This is a two-stage switch. If you can see that there's actually two parts to it. One controls the spinning of the anode and the heat to the filament coil. Once again, that's getting a little bit advanced. Basically, when you're going to make an exposure, you go ahead and completely press both switches. It has a built-in two-stage switch which allows you to go ahead and fundamentally prime the tube so that the anode is up to speed and the filament is burning enough electrons so that you can make a quicker exposure if necessary if motion is a problem during your exam. Uh, like if you're dealing with a two-year-old patient and you're trying to get a chest x-ray and they're screaming and motion is a factor, then you might want to press the first stage of the switch before you press the second stage. Anyway, it's also referred to as a two-stage switch. <laughs>